linking up with Luke. How the hell did that happen? Well, I was with another company called Foresight Records down in Fort Lauderdale. Okay. Luke was in Miami, and I did a show with the two live crew at a club, and Fresh Kid Ice, R.I.P. to him, he came mm. over, he's like, yo, man, Luke like your style, man. Luke wants you to get with the label. And I told him, I said, yo, I got four more months on this contract with Foresight, and tell him I'm going to call him after I get through, you know, with the contract with Foresight. And I got through. Yo, he flew me down. The rest was history. What was it like touching down with Uncle Luke? Because at that time, I mean, bass music is going crazy, and this man got a chokehold on the game. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, it was a beautiful thing, man. I really liked it because Luke, he was independent, and he wasn't going to let nobody stop him. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, we used to get on the shows with the New York groups, and they used to be like, yo, they got these country boys on the show, but we used to be rocking their ass. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm with you. I'm with you. Hooking up with a young DJ Tomp too, man, on the production side of things. How did y'all link up? Well, I started off with DJ Man. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we kind of went our own ways. And then I needed another DJ and I needed another producer. Mm. And Mike Fresh was doing a production at the time. Mm. But Tomp was a dope DJ, so I said, okay, I'm gonna snatch Mike Fresh up for the production. Yeah. Cause Toomp wasn't doing the production back then. Yeah. Toomp was just DJing, so I, I snatched Mike Fresh up for the production and I got Toomp for the DJ. My God. Y'all traveling the world, man. I mean, what was that like for you once you realized that this rap was about to take you around the world? Oh, it was a beautiful thing, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? Cause like I say, I was doing it from the heart. Mm -hmm. I wasn't doing it for the money. I mean, yeah. don't get me wrong, I wanted the money too, but I was such a B-boy and so into this hip hop thing, you know right. what I'm saying? I was doing it really for the love of it. Exactly, You know exactly. what I'm saying? I mean, when you look at hip hop now, and you see where the streets kind of intersect with hip hop now. Do you feel like that's something that's always been going on or do you feel like this is just something that these new artists are having to deal with? No, nah, I mean, you know, because, you know, I was in the streets back then when I was rapping, and you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, that's back when the dope game was real strong. So, you yeah. know, don't get me wrong. I used to go to the Charles Discos, all the hood spots, and, you know, the dope boys used to be looking at me like, ah, this nigga's a rapper. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? But they just don't know I was getting money like they was getting money. You know what I'm right. saying? And like I say, me being from the projects in NYC, mm -hmm. this was lightweight down here to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Let me ask you something. Um... You keep saying, okay, we talking about the NYC. Um, when you dropped, were you accepted by the homies back home more than the homies here in Atlanta? Like, a lot of people think that you're from Atlanta. Yeah. It's, it's going to be a shock to them that you're from New York when they when they see this interview. Okay. A lot of people will bet money. Man, Shadi from Decatur, man. What are you talking about? You <laughs> see what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, did you get the same love that from Atlanta, uh, from New York, that you got from Atlanta when you dropped back in the day? That's so funny. You you. That's the best question I ever had in my life because... My homeboys in New York were like, yo, man, you making all this country music. Oh. You know what I'm saying? They was like, yo, that's whack, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They was like, yo, man, we from, we from the city, man. We don't make that kind of music. But see, I was smart because I was a DJ before I was a rapper. Okay. And I tell everybody this story. When I used to DJ parties when I was 14, 15 years old, I throw an Egyptian lover, the dance floor get packed. Right. But when I throw on Dougie Fresh the show, everybody go sit down. Mm. Oh. So I was like, hold up. Let me throw on Planet Rock, dance floor pack, whatever was Lottie Dottie. Everybody go sit back down. I was like, yo, man, if I ever get a chance to make a record, I'm going to make me an up-tempo joint. Right. Yeah. But back to the original question, yeah, my boys in the city <laughs> is like, yo, man, that's the whack. <laughs> <laughs> that's the whack. What did that do to you, though, Shadi, when you thinking that the home team ain't rocking with you, but you're down here getting it in? I mean, I couldn't pay them no attention because I was getting money. Yeah, you know right. what I'm saying? And then another thing, we wasn't going up north doing shows, so I really didn't care. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Uh, I got to please my people down here and on the West Coast. You know what I'm saying? I got to please the people where the music is really getting to. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? New York wasn't checking for none of this none of this booty music and stuff until Luke went up there and fought hard yeah. and got, it, got up in there. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? What was you your know? favorite time, though, Shadi, during that run while you traveling the globe making this music? I mean, what was the times that Shadi really felt alive out here in the game? Ah, believe it or not, I used to love going on the road, getting that money, doing them shows. 
But I felt alive when I get back to Atlanta and go to the Phoenix. Ah. Uh. Dance club what's up, what's right down up, the street, up, Dre? bro. What up, though, Dre? You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's when I felt the live is when I come back to Atlanta and get that ATL love. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I wanted to be in Atlanta. Don't get me wrong. I love going on the road, doing the shows. But coming back to the city, Charles Disco, the yes, Phoenix, yeah. San Susie. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's, that was the feeling. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. You know, what do you think about Atlanta now, though? Realizing that it was a small ass city at that time to where it's at right now, how do you feel about the progression of everything? And then, did you feel like this was a place that hip hop would eventually call home or the capital of it? Not at all. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because it was moving around. Yeah. But when it got to Atlanta, it stayed. <laughs> right. You know yes. what I'm saying? It stayed. I mean, you know, that just go to show you how serious. Everybody in the ATL was about this rap thing. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, because when they got here, Atlanta wasn't letting it go. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They stayed with it, bro. You know what exactly. I'm saying? I mean, group after group, hit after hit. It can't move until we start coming whack. But Facts. we never did that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Being in Atlanta with all of these mm. other artists at the time, too, what was it like when you saw the Kilos coming out, the Raheems coming out, and everybody else coming out after you, and after you done blazed this trail and busted wide open out here? Oh, it was a beautiful thing, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Because, like the dope game, you can't get all the money. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, when Ghetto Mafia came out, Kilo, Raheem, Sammy Sam, it was a beautiful thing, you know yeah. what I'm saying? We gonna share this money all around this city, you know Come what on. I'm saying? Yeah. Come on. You know, I wasn't walking around like, oh, why they coming out? I gotta be the only rap. Nah, nah, I was happy for everybody, bro. What's up? Yeah. You yeah. Know what I'm what is, uh, talk to me about um, uh, King Up With Jay, because you know what I'm saying? When I, when, I think y'all names go hand in hand. When you say Shadi, you say King Up With Jay. Say King Up With Jay, you say MC Shadi. Cause y'all the two, you know, my pioneers from the east side. Okay. What was it like? You know what I'm saying? Having your, your music up in the J stores and the relationship with King Yet with Jay back in the day. Oh, man, it was a beautiful thing because, like I say, if your music wasn't with Edward J, you wasn't making no noise. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Edward J was so dope. He'll take a record you made, which he took my rap when never died. That was my first record I ever made. And he turned around and made a whole nother song of his version yeah, out yeah, of it. Yeah. The record was so dope. <laughs> I went to Foresight to try to get them to put it out as a song, yeah. but they, they said no because I already made Rap Will Never Die to it. I said it don't matter. Edward J made a whole complete song, and I tried to get it put out on Foresight, but they wouldn't do it. Wow. My God. Wow. Yep. That's wow. crazy as hell. <laughs> How do you feel like that impacts your career when you already had this vision for this song, and then you can't even get folks to... Rock with the idea that you just gave Yeah, it's, it's so crazy. See, that's why I take my hat off to Luke, man, because yeah. let me tell you what happened. If I would have took that same idea to Luke, Luke would have put it out. That's how mm -hmm. dope Luke was. Let me tell you what I did. I used to rap with a dude in high school, Cedar Grove High School, a dude named Tony Rock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When we graduated, he went to the Army for four years. Mm -hmm. His name was Tony M.F. Rock. Mm -hmm. Make a long story short, he called me when he got out the Army. He was like, yo, Pete, man, I see you making records. I said, yo, you still not a rock? He said, yeah. I said, yo, Luke, my man just got out the army. We used to be a rap group in high school. Luke was like, yo, fly him down. And me and Mike Fresh produced him. And Luke put him out. Just like that. Wow. That's wow. how dope Luke was, bro. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's crazy. Yep. That's crazy. How were you and Luke able to settle everything, too, in the future when you went back to go get your money? Well, it was a, it was an ugly situation, but it was just business. It yeah. wasn't nothing personal, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the way God works is, I just seen Luke about five months ago at an event in Atlanta, man, and I just walked up to him and said, yo, man, thank you for everything you've done for my career. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I had I had to give it up to what him, did, What man. did he say when you, when, you, when you said that? How was, what's, what was his reaction? I thought both was about to start crying, word up, man. Damn. It was that, it was that deep, you know what I'm saying? So... We looked at each other for a minute and I just moved on. You know what I'm saying? Where wow. we up. Wow, well, got what's that the what's that the pictures? It's the picture right here of everybody getting back together, man, the reunion. So are we gonna have a reunion album, uh Shadi? You know what I mean? What we what, what, we gonna have a reunion? <laughs> I'm here. Y'all need to put need to call for one right now? <laughs> Luke, Luke, if you see us, you know what I'm saying? We need a reunion now. We need one more with Shadi. Matter of fact, you need you gotta come get all of us. Yeah. Raheem, Kilo, Troy, all of us. Everybody. And we need to do an album for the legend himself. 
you know, featuring all the, everybody that came after you. Oh, yeah, yeah, that'll be That's dope. That's what we need to do. You wouldn't believe it. I was at a house party about three weeks ago, and a dude from East Lake Meadows stepped to me and said, Yo, Shot, you, Sammy Sam, Kilo, and Raheem need to make an album. I Ooh. agree. I agree. I bugged out when he said that because you just saying it now. But they didn't say my, me. <laughs> now, they, now, we don't leave him, we don't leave him out. Okay. Now, I don't need to be the album. I don't think you need to be the album either. Flop. I don't did, think you, you need to be the album. He didn't, 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 didn't ask you to be on the mixtape. He did not just say your name. He didn't forget it. He didn't forget it. He didn't forget it and the other guy didn't forget it. Okay, you were left out. No, no, man. Come on, man. When you mention these brothers, I mean, they go into me like that three cis mafia, mm-hmm. um, play a fly. See, I don't know about none of them groups, mm. but that's ghetto mafia over all them groups. That's yeah. that. That's that click, y'all. That's that click. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying? It's Absolutely. a beautiful thing, like the guy Fraser Boy. See, I don't yeah. know about none of that stuff, yeah. but I know about ghetto mafia. Exactly. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. I know about three cis. Don't get me wrong, but the play a fly and. That that little error right there, right, yeah, right. yeah, you know, I know what you're yeah. About. See, I don't, yeah. I don't uh-huh. know about none of that. Yeah. You know, I mean, none of them. I just know about ghetto mafia yeah. and three six mafia. Right. 